Hi, welcome back to another Terrence Gapes video. Uh, today, this video, we're going to be doing part two of the ocean board update. Uh, this one will focus on the surf and the seaweed and, you know, the intersection at the shoreline. Uh, if you are new to the channel, I want to welcome you sincerely. I hope you find something here of use to you. Uh, and this has been an ongoing project which has numerous videos for it. Uh, so if you feel confused when you take a look at this, uh, you may want to stop and go and watch a few of those earlier videos to get caught up on exactly how I got to this point. Um, oh, I almost forgot to mention. That's why I'm having notes helps. Uh, this video will also include an update on the gloss coating. Um, and I'm going to show you a board that I just finished with that. And if you are interested and you haven't seen my review of the material I'm using, uh, then you should go to my product reviews playlist and watch the video. It's um, PolyOptic1411. And uh, that will give you some background on the kind of material it is and why I chose it. So. With all of that said, let's get over to the bench and we'll take a look. So here we can see um, two of the ocean boards. Uh, and what I wanted to do for this overhead view is just talk about a couple of the big picture items. And then I'm going to show you some close-ups of the cliff boards. Uh, but one of the things that I, I just wanted to sort of point out is that it's been very difficult over the course of this project to... Uh, keep everything uniform across all of the boards because of the amount of time invested in each board and the span of time between, you know, the first board and the last board. So we noticed a few uh, deviations, shall we say, and uh, there was a small drift in the texture of the foam of the, uh, the actual crashing surf, I should say, uh, where I started um, doing it in this very, very meticulous, tiny little, and then later it kind of got a little softer, but you know, I think in some ways the softer works a little bit better. So I've uh, touched up just a few areas, partly because I got some caulking on them, so I needed to go back and touch them up anyway, so it's a little bit more homogenized, and the difference is probably never going to be noticed by anybody but me. So that's how small it was, but I like to point it out. The other thing though was a much bigger problem and it had to do with the uh, foam pattern coming from behind the waves. And that basically drifted because I kept trying to speed up as I was putting down the foam. And I thought the look wouldn't be that much of a difference. I should have had a master board out every time I touched a board, but you figure I've done three, you know, do, 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 it's all the same. Well, it wasn't. So what happened is, um, you know, here we have a very fine textured sort of line pattern. And when I was doing it towards the end, it had gotten a little broader and it didn't look bad, actually. I, I think it would have passed just fine as a effect, but it didn't match. So I actually went in and I scraped off a whole bunch of foam because I'm insane. And I... Um, and I don't plan ahead well enough, and that's a lesson I've learned from this set. Uh, I need to do a more planning, but that's not today's topic. Um, it'll probably be in the q and I'll talk about it at the end. So what I did anyway is I scraped off a bunch, and then I went back in and re-foamed it to match. You know, this is more of one of the original boards. This is more what was brought into alignment with this. And I think the match is a pretty good, and I'm happy with it. And I just sort of pointed out as a, you know, caveat emptor, that's not really right, but, um, you know, sort of, if you try to take on a project like this, you know, monitor it along the way. Um, one thing I've added since I last showed you the boards 
um, are these uh, small sort of break short. You know, I realized that um, beaches often have little, you know, those little tiny ripples that are coming up. So I put in some uh, scattered around on the boards, and I think that helped add um, some realism and also uh, help make a transition from the water to the shoreline look a little bit more believable. And I think it adds a little more interest. So uh, anyway, that's um, a new addition. The other thing that I tried to do was to put in a little more variation in the water right along the shore. And I had uh, somebody of uh, several videos back mention that it's a little bit tricky um, to do without spending an inordinate amount of time on and I can't devote that time to it uh, at this point. So what I've done is just done a little bit of that work, which I think actually added a fair amount, and then also go in and uh, add a little more variation to the wet sand, you know, create some more undulations that would, you know, give that a sense of waves sweeping onto the beach and sweeping off. So that's a look at these. Let's take a look at a couple of the cliff boards. So uh, this is a shot of two of the cliff boards put together, and there's several things here uh, that I'd like to just quickly cover. One is that there may be too much surf around these. Uh, I had a viewer uh, from a video back, maybe one uh, who was commenting on, you know, a certain rock and, you know, maybe uh, a little too much and, you know, and I thought, I think that was a fair observation. And what I realized is that I think I frequently look at the micro a little bit more than the macro. I do, I do look at the macro, but you know, sometimes I'm, I'm looking at this union and I'm thinking, I don't know if the wave isn't crashing here, you know, what, what's behind it. And, uh, I'm also looking at the water movement and how am I going to make that transition? You know, and if it's not swelling and it's added to for challenges is that this is a relatively quick tran transition, uh, meaning, you know, because it, there's sort of supposed to be a shallow shore here and the waves are rolling up really fast. So I think maybe in hindsight, I might pull a few of the uh, waves off of these boards, but, you know, that's being picky, I think. Um, of course, you be the ultimate judges and the customer being the ultimate judge. So um, let's see here. I, one of the other things that made some of this happen is the difficulty in trying to manage these coins, uh, you know, because the waves are moving, you know, towards the cliffs. When we get into right here, it's sort of a little trick on how to manage that. Um, and it, again, it became a micro view of, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? Rather than like, okay, how do I make this fit into this uh, more easily? But of course, there is no easy because here's another, you know, corner and here's another corner. And so it's all, you know, it's a bit of a bit of a challenge to uh, manage that. Um, but what I did is I also took some time to put in some uh, waves that are rolling, you know, backwards off of the surf. I don't even know if I'm in focus. It's more important that the boards are. Uh, and, you know, here's a little example here where I have, uh, you know, just like it's piled up and then it's sweeping off and it forms a little, you know, curl and backwash, backwash like that a little bit here as well, sort of meeting the incoming wave. Uh, this is a little bit larger version here. Uh, and I thought that helped, and a little one here, I thought that helped to really sort of break that up a little bit and manage that uh, a little bit more effectively. Before I talk about the splashes, because it just occurred to me, I'm gonna need to do a uh, angle change for that. I wanted to talk a little bit about the seaweed, and this is all relevant to the, the boards I just showed you, so I figured we'll just talk about it once here. I wanted to put some seaweed up on the shore um, to break up the overall sand, you know, impact. It's, it's broad and it's plain. I didn't want to put in little bits all around, however, because uh, that's going to be far too persnickety of work because the challenge is getting these to stick with some kind of adhesive without making the sand around it look wet. 
So what I um, ended up doing was um, using some of the same silicone thinned down and then, you know, managing dry times and, you know, tackiness. And it was a balancing act to get that all to come together. Uh, but it's worked pretty well and they're on there pretty firmly. There's a few spots uh, that may not be joined quite as well as I'd like. Uh, and I'm just going to do a quick once over um, right at the end and just see if there's anywhere that needs touching up. The other thing I did was take some of that seaweed and put it in along the sand cliff union because it does look a little stark. And I had somebody else comment on that and I, I agreed and I noticed that myself. So um, what I did is use the, the seaweed as that softener to sort of make that bridge uh, a little bit better and um, particularly on um, the beached areas of the cliffs. There's another cliff that has a beach as well. And I think that worked out pretty well. Uh, there's no real way for me to completely hide that join. Uh, but of course, there is going to be sand right up against the rocks. So it's not like it's completely artificial. It's more of a visual aesthetic I'm working for. And, um, and of course, this is a little higher than the high tide mark, right? But who knows, de deposition by a storm or something like that. Uh, so that was some of my thinking that went into uh, why that is there. And I thought, it added quite a bit. Let me find you a splash or two real quick so we can look at those. So I wanted to show you a close up of the splashes because they came out a little bit better than uh, the ones I had done before. Uh, so basically I got a thinner texture out of the splash, you know, material uh, with a little bit more uh, negative space in them. If you go back, a ways back, uh, you'll see me, you know, contemplating how much how much space in between the the splashes to give it a little bit more of an airy feel, and and that was uh, something I was working towards on this, uh, you know, on this final go with the splashes is how much can I tweak that and push that, and the other thing uh, I tried to do was to, of course, with the cliffs you get a little more play, is to you know bring them out like they're hitting the rocks and splashing away uh, I, you know it's it's weird because the splashes are two-dimensional and it is hard to make them three-dimensional without spending a lot of time on them <laughs> I mean just making them to start with takes time so I, I left it as is but it would be nice to have it be a little bit more three-dimensional so basically the cliffs help that by hiding the two dimensionality because they're, you know, they are going to be sort of flat coming off of the cliffs. So that worked out really well. And I, I really liked how they came out and um, the uh, finished effect that it gave. So one more looky loo before we get out of here. I want to show you one of the boards with the polyoptic. So here you can see uh, one of the open water ocean boards with the polyoptic uh, 1411 gloss coating on it. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, if you have questions about that material and why I chose it, you should go see the product review that I did for it. Uh, but um, one of the things that I really liked was the ability to get a very, very thin layer on the surface. Uh, using a uh, brush, I was able to really push it around at the thickness level that I wanted. and it took less material than I thought it would, which is a good thing because there's a lot of boards to coat. So, uh, so that was nice. The um, other thing is that I've been working on trying to keep it dry uh, because it's moisture sensitive and that seemed to have worked well. Um, it may be bubbling lightly, but you can't tell because of the incredible thinness. But what I will say is I think the look came out fantastic. That's not something I always say, but it's, it felt very rewarding to have taken the time to sculpt the, the waves for the casts, to add in, you know, sort of the, uh, you know, undulations in them, and then also to have it seamlessly join with the um, areas along the edges where I had to do some uh, Dremel work to, uh, you know, retexture it after they had, uh, uh, you know, gotten resin over the cast, I guess is really what happened there. So um, the ability that that, you know, just blends in really well was a relief. Um, the polyoptic is um, curing very well. 
Uh, it's um, about 24 hours almost since I put it on and I'm fine with a one day cure. It should be faster, but it's because this is so thin You'll talk, I'll talk about that in the review if you want to check that out. So anyway, I just wanted to give you one uh, last piece of uh, info on the progress that has been made. And the only caveat about, oh, I, need a, I need a pointer that isn't so pointy. It makes me just want to, ah! Um, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's probably because my makeup man isn't here. One caveat with using it though, is I did a test piece over some caulking that I had put some foam effects on and the uh, that was to test both its application over the caulking and what kind of an effect it would have on the foam effects that have already been put down. The uh, coating over the caulking is great. I think it gives it a very nice seal. Um, it reduces any tackiness that was on the caulking. It sometimes stays tacky for quite a while um, so it won't pick up fingerprints, that kind of an idea. And over the foam, eh, it kind of, you know, mutes it. So I'm not 100% confident on exactly how I'm going to proceed with that. I think with the um, uh, boards with the waves, what I'll do is I'll polyoptic it, polyoptic it to the, uh, uh, to the, the backs of the waves and the foam and see if that feathers well. I might try to paint it in very carefully in between areas, um, which might work actually pretty well. And if not, um, then I can just coat the surface and then um, just quickly touch up the foam again. But uh, it would go very quick because I'm not having to worry about patterning so much because the pattern will be laid in under. I'm just sort of highlighting it. So, so that will be um, the... Uh, the final question mark of the project, exactly how that spot will work out, um, but I'm not anticipating uh, any big problems. And, um, and you'll see how that comes out when you see the finished video for this set. So I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at all of that. Uh, this it will be the last video on this project in progress. The next video will be of it finished. Yes, it is true. I am that close. Hallelujah. Um, and so hopefully um, you will come back to join me for that because it's a rather momentous uh, event. And I should get a bottle of champagne, right? And, you know, for it. Um, I might do that. <laughs> I might. That's not a bad idea. It just occurred to me. All right, well, think about that. I think champagne is totally underused as a beverage in our culture. But I also want to mention uh, that the next video, however, in the interim, will be a question and answer uh, segment, which I haven't done in quite a while. And one of the questions in that segment is about this set, uh, and it will be looking at it from a very different lens. So uh, you might be interested in that video as well. So hopefully you'll come back to check out those videos and more, because you know I'll be back soon with another Terranscapes video. Um, um, ums are terrible. I don't know. I might, might actually edit that one out. Let's see here. So I wanted to show you a little bit of a close up of the, look at the lens. <laughs> I almost need a picture in picture of me. Don't look at the fuck. Don't. So I'm going to put you on the porch. I've already played with you. Come on. Cut me some slack here, buddy. You're going out. You're out. God damn it. Come here. So <laughs> uh, no, I'm not giving you more love. Come here. You're out. You're out. You're out. That bad. You go outside. I'm having a hard time concentrating as it is.